Hey guys, it's Jan Charte and I'm back again with another video. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the pros and cons of e-commerce versus brick and mortars. So if you didn't know, I come from the brick and mortar industry. Um, I worked in corporate retail for a little bit over 10 years before I started my online business. And in all honesty, I thought that I wanted to have a brick and mortar business because obviously that was what I was most used to. And I thought it would be super duper easy to have a online or a in-person business. But what I realized is that I've never actually owned a brick and mortar business. I just worked inside of them. My previous job, if you've been following me for some time, you probably know that my previous job went out of business. And that was honestly the first job that introduced me to what it could be like running a brick and mortar business. So we're going to first and foremost talk about the pros of e-commerce and then we'll go into the cons of e-commerce and then we're going to round this thing out with the pros and cons of brick and mortar so stay tuned welcome to my channel where we talk about boutiques e-commerce business and all things making money online all right so let's first talk about the pros of e-commerce the biggest pro is that it's not that expensive to start an online business you know you get your business license you get your you choose your platform for your online store and you buy your products but if you go the route of drop shipping you don't even have to buy any products it's super duper cheap to start a online business. It is so cheap to get or start an e-commerce business. So the biggest advantage is going to be the lower overhead expenses. Your bill is going to be real low in comparison to a brick and mortar business. You don't have utilities. You don't have to have a staff in the beginning. And it's just super easy and not going to be as um, costly to you. You're going to also be able to have the advantage of digital marketing or social media. Social media is completely free. You don't have to run ads, although ads is amazing. You should definitely dabble in ads at some point, but you don't even need them to begin with. You just need beautiful content, engaging and appealing and hashtags. And hopefully you attract some people who like your content enough that they share it with some other people and your content can move far and wide across the whole entire world real swiftly these days we got TikTok and reels you go viral everybody knows you overnight so that's super cool and costs you literally nothing you have the flexibility of your operations in general so although you want to have like rules and processes and things like that in place when you have a store you have to have like hours of operation and you know somebody needs to open and close the door and it's just a lot. But with e-commerce, your business is open all day, every day. And guess what? You can close it too if you feel like it. You can turn your store off if you, if you like, but don't do that, please, because that just doesn't make sense. It defeats the purpose of e-commerce. But e-commerce is like the coolest thing ever. And although it's hard, I will not say that it's easy. It's hard. It is super cost effective. And I would recommend e-commerce to anyone. But there are disadvantages. And let's talk about those. So there are quite a few disadvantages of e-commerce and some of them are more so disadvantages that are going to play a role in like the type of person that you are. Like I'm going to just be frank with you. So I'm going to start with customer service being one because I come from retail. So my literal job was to provide good customer service. There are tons of people who start a business and have no customer service experience whatsoever. They literally don't know how to talk to people. And so it's a little harder having an e-commerce business because there's no in-person interaction. That person can't see your face. They don't know if you're smiling. They don't know if you're laughing. All they have is the words that you convey to them through like an email or a text message or whatever. And you run the risk of someone completely taking your message all wrong or your response all wrong. And they think you're being negative or mean or nasty when in fact you're not. So you have to learn what it means to provide good customer service as a online business. And that's a little tricky if you've never had customer service or have don't have a customer service background. You also have the issues of learning SEO, which stands for search engine optimization. Your business needs to be discoverable. You have to infuse specific keywords throughout your social media presence 
your website presence, whether that be through your product descriptions, your product titles, your headers on your pages, all of that's gonna play a role in your ability to have a business that's discoverable through search engines. And a lot of times people have these super cutesy names for their products and things like that, but those cutesy names are not going to help your business to be discovered. They're not gonna help your products to be discovered. So SEO plays such a huge role in your ability to be found on the internet and you definitely wanna take it super duper seriously. You also have to have a strong social media presence because there's tons of competition out there. I sell sweatpants, y'all. I sell $20 sweatpants. You can go get those sweatpants anywhere from anyone at any time all year long. And that alone makes it that much more important that I'm being extremely careful and considerate of what my brand needs to look and sound like online so that it stands out in comparison to all the other people and brands that sell the same thing and that serve the same people that I intend to serve. So you have to make sure that you are actually creating a brand, that you have a brand identity that's gonna stand out and make people feel a sense of connection to your business. So those are important elements of creating an e-commerce business and they are actually disadvantages to a lot of people because they have to learn them. They have to actually spend time implementing these things into their business and oftentimes as new boutique owners and e-commerce brands, we don't actually know that these are things that we should be thinking about. So now that we've gone through pros and cons of e-commerce, let's go through pros and cons of brick and mortar businesses. All right, so let's start with the pros of brick and mortar. I literally loved working in a store. I loved being able to talk to people and see people all day and just have conversations and build connections. And that is one of the biggest pros of having a brick and mortar business. You get to build connections and relationships with the people that you see on a regular basis. You get to create an environment that is inviting and engaging and that ultimately they feel like they want to return to and that they want to refer their friends and families to come to as well. So you have that ability to hold conversations with people and unlike e-commerce where they can't read your face or read your tone of voice, you actually have the ability to smile and laugh and have conversations with these people and they get to see and feel your energy because they're standing right in front of you. So that is a major advantage of brick and mortar business that does not exist as an e-commerce business. You also have the ability to build community partnerships. So for example, at my previous job, we would do like pop-up shops or like joint pop-up shops where we let other small business owners come into the store and set up shop. And while their audience was being introduced to our brand, our audience was being introduced to their brand. We sold uh, candles that were locally made by another company. So she got some promotion in our store and she also promoted our store by telling people that they could buy her products in our, inside of our store. So that was super helpful and it just made it a little bit easier for us to expand the reach of our business in a local capacity. Also, as it pertains to brick and mortar, is gonna be experiential marketing. So while e-commerce business relies a lot on digital marketing, with an in-person store or brick and mortar store, you have the ability to create an environment that's like super exciting. I think about like, if you guys have like a selfie studio in your, uh, in your town or in your city, obviously they have these like settings that make people want to come because they change often and they create like, um, they can create content and things like that. So not only are we coming to like experience the uh, the space, we're also coming to like create content and just do something that's a little bit fun. So as a brick and mortar business, you have the opportunity to create something that not only do people wanna come and like buy something, they wanna like come and feel the environment. I was recently in London and me and my friend, we were so excited at all these different places that we went because they were exuding experiential marketing in the most fantastic way. They had all of these different activations and like photo booths and just places where we were able to like create content and ultimately that that creates content for them or promotion for them that could potentially draw an audience in. So those are a few pros of brick and mortar business, but let's talk about those cons because the cons, they're big, real big. Okay, so in all honesty, there are way too many cons to having a brick and mortar business. And as I stated, I loved working in corporate retail. I love being able to interact with people, but as a business owner and having an understanding of what it takes to own a brick and mortar, in all honesty, I personally, in this economy, don't feel like it's worth it. So the biggest con to having a brick and mortar business is gonna be the overhead cost, the overhead expenses. So you have not only your rent, but you have your utilities, your heat, your air, um, you pay for your internet, 
you have potentially a staff of people that may need to help you and it might not even be a huge staff but you might you're going to need help you don't want to have to be the person that comes into that store every single day you want to have a break or take a break you want to be able to have some time to yourself and that means you're probably going to need some help and that person's going to need to get paid that sucks but in e-commerce you don't really need the help you don't you don't act you don't have to have a staff so those are really two big cons to having a brick and mortar business. On top of that, you have to make sure that you choose a prime location. One of the biggest mistakes that I see online boutique owners make is choosing a space or a place that is cheap or you know affordable, but it's in a terrible location or just a location that doesn't have a lot of uh, traffic that passes through. You wanna make sure that you're choosing a location where you're gonna actually have people that see your store so that hopefully they see your signage or you know maybe they're visiting the store or the place that's right next door to you and it kind of introduces them to your brand because of the location that you chose so you don't want to choose a super cheap or affordable place because of the price but then you have to pay in extra marketing to actually get people to the store that's going to suck in the long run so overhead costs and the location that needs to be taken into consideration. So another disadvantage of having a brick and mortar business is going to be the changing customer preferences. Your customer is going to change. And I think about like how many times I actually go into a store and like buy something. Your store, it should change periodically, you know, with the seasons, you're changing your win window displays, you're changing the style of products that you sell because as an in-person business, you kind of have to abide by the climate of what's going on where you are. Whereas with an e-commerce business, I can sell whatever I want to sell, no matter what the weather is like, because it's hot somewhere, but it's cold somewhere else. It's raining somewhere, but it's snowing somewhere else. Like I can sell whatever I want at any time of the, of the year without having the stipulation of someone coming to my store and saying like, why are you selling shorts? And it's, you know, 30 degrees outside. When you have a brick and mortar, you got a, a piece to the climate of what's going on and what the customer's preferences are. And that kind of sucks in all honesty. It's kind of boring. So the last thing that's a huge disadvantage of having a brick and mortar business is gonna be the upfront cost. Now, obviously I don't have a brick and mortar business, but I do have a brick and mortar space where my products are housed and where we ship our products from. This is my second space. And in all honesty, I really did not anticipate the amount of money that I would have to put into it before I actually even got to utilize it. I'm going to tell you about the space that I have now because in all honesty, it has been a complete nightmare and it was just something that I really could not have expected. I did not know until I had signed the lease, signed my name on the dotted line and gave these people my deposit. So for literally the first four months of me having this space, we had no working heat. We were in the dead of winter and it was freezing. Thank God my husband's a trooper and would go in there and pack those orders every day, but he did it complaining every single day. And I complained for five months straight about my heat not working. They sent someone in to apparently, or so-called fix it. They kind of fixed it. It was still halfway freezing in half of the space. Fast forward to today, we go four months with no heat and now we have no working air and it's summer. So it took another month for us to get working air. All while they're expecting me to pay my rent in full. I had huge plans for what I wanted to do in that space and I have not been able to do a single thing in that space because I cannot comfortably be inside of it. That is totally unexpected. So a huge part of being our disadvantage of having a brick and mortar is those upfront costs a lot of them being unexpected. You might have a leak in the roof. You might have utilities that you're paying for, but the heat and the air aren't working. You might need to get the floors redone. You might need, I had to get my windows tinted because it was like being in a fishbowl all day and my husband was not having it. So many things that we just did not consider that, and that was money that I could have put into my online business. I could have spent that money on marketing. I could have spent that money on influencers. I could have spent that money on inventory. But instead I had to fix it, I had to use it to fix things inside of this brick and mortar space. So as you can see, e-commerce is where it's at. Brick and mortar businesses, they're cool and they're necessary in some instances, but they're expensive, they're costly, time consuming, and there's a lot of unexpected expenses that are gonna come your way. So currently I teach online boutique owners and e-commerce brands how to create profitable 
online businesses. And if you too want to learn how to create a profitable online business, I wanna invite you to join my monthly membership. Just click the link in the description and join today. And if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments and I will happily respond to you. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.